Welcome to the Morning Nerdy News. I'm your host, Gray Falcon. Got a kind of a short news day today, so we'll just jump right into it. First off, PlayStation, the fan will be optimized in future online updates. So this is coming to us over on IGM, where they got a translation for 4gamer.net, which is a Japanese site. You go over there, you'll have to have it Google translated if you want to read through that and you don't know Japanese. But effectively, they're going to optimize the fan for different games, saying that they have the three different sensors for heat on there, and they're going to see how games run, and depending upon how hot things get, especially as the game gets, uh, as games get more and more powerful, require more resources, and use more of the PlayStation 5's overall power, the heat is going to build up, as well as, you know, dust buildup gets in there, and Hopefully you take the time to help clean that out and do some work on that. But overall, the plan is to optimize the fan so it'll perform better depending upon the game. Now that could mean we get jet engine sounds again. That concerns me a little bit because man, that thing could get loud. But that fan is very large. So hopefully with the size of it, it isn't going to have to spin up as high in order to get the same cooling performance out of it. They did spend a lot more on the cooling as we saw in their breakdown. In other PlayStation news, seven essential gameplay tips for Ghost of Tsushima Legends out today. So, well, this was Friday, but this is over on the PlayStation blog and you come down and they give basic tips. They say, make the best of your chosen class in here. And that's because once you choose your class, you have to play that in order to unlock the other, the other characters. So you have to continue to focus and grind through that in order to be able to unlock the other three. So choose wisely from the get-go. They go in talking about coordinating attacks, crowd control, the abilities that you can get, watching the sky. Now this one is quite important because in watching the sky, what you need to do with this is when you have downtime with your team, you have to face different directions and look for the fireworks up in the sky because the sky fireworks, <laughs> skyworks, the fireworks indicate that's where the next horde is coming from. And that's the direction you need to go in order to fight off the new Mo the Mongols that are coming in. And it says fight for every point because it makes a difference. You get uh, treasure and other things for going through and fighting through this and picking your gifts and choosing when to use them wisely and unlock new techniques. And it just talks about, you know, what kind of paths you want to go down, what kind of items you want to choose and making sure you choose those correctly for your play style and what works best for the way you play. So go in here, give that a read. If you've been playing that game, let me know. Tell me how you've been enjoying it. I have yet to actually log in. I meant to play this weekend, but unfortunately my son he really got into Destiny 2, so I spent the weekend playing with him on that. Uh, so I won't be getting into this probably until later on today to check out how this actually plays through. But let me know what your experience has been and how you like the actual RPG elements of this with adding in the new costume pieces that affect your gear and things. In other updates, StarCraft 2 content updates have ended so Blizzard can focus on franchise future. And this is coming over on GameSpot, but... What they're doing is they're still going to have minor little updates, but those updates are going to be primarily commanders, other things that are more designed towards esports in order to help push that forward. So if you watch the esports for StarCraft 2, it's just to help keep that fresh, constantly keep that changing while the rest of the team starts to focus on the next StarCraft game. Now, they don't go into any details. I would presume this is probably StarCraft 3, but we're not going to know for sure until this actually comes out. So, 10 years, pretty good run. The original StarCraft ran for a good long time as well, so I'm happy to see how long they are providing support for this, and we can look forward to the next game here in the near future. Over into tech news, WCCF Tech AMD Radeon RX 6000 Navi 21 XT Navi 21 XL Big Navi GPU clock speeds reportedly up to 2.4 gigahertz and 2.2 gigahertz. Huge jump from base clock base to boost clock. If you haven't checked out any of these articles over the weekend, it came out with some leaks from APIs and from Rogue Gamer over on Twitter that they are getting huge boost clocks out of these in comparison to what their base clock is. 
So if you scroll down through here, you can read the different information. And Rogue Gamer puts base clock information for these. And uh, there are different models and versions. And as far as they can tell, AMD is once again artificially blocking how high these can boost to. They did this last time between the 5500 XT and 5700 XT because if they didn't artificially limit them, the 5500 XT could hit 5700 XT performances and they didn't want that. They wanted to actually have those two different things. Now, you could still boost a 5700 XT far higher than you could a 5500 XT. For people who weren't going to spend a lot of time or the 5700 XT was perfect for what they needed, they didn't want to infringe on that, have someone buying the lower end card, then boosting it up and discouraging that extra cost sale for someone. And... We have the base clocks in here. Oh, oh my, sorry. I accidentally jumped to his uh, his thread there, but we can do that from here. So XL 30, 1350 megahertz to 1400 megahertz, 1800 megahertz to 19 megahertz on game clock, and then boost to 2100 megahertz up to possibly 2200. And APIs are saying that they are getting 2200 on some of theirs. And then base clock of 1450 to 1500 megahertz base clock on the XT version of Navi 21, then game clock of 2000 megahertz to 2100 megahertz, and then the final boost clock, so 2200 megahertz to 2400 megahertz. The, the boost clock is that temporary boost that you get. So you hit those spikes in areas where it has extra power available to it, it has the cooling available to it, and it can just push that boost clock higher. Now, those are not typically sus sustainable. <laughs> so, since they're not sustainable, you're only going to temporarily get that type of performance out of it. And a lot of that will also have to do with what your cooling in your system is, how the fans on the actual GPU for the version you buy perform, and just a lot of little factors that go into it. So, you should fully expect that these are probably going to sit closer to game clock most of the time, or base clock if you, things are kind of subtle, don't require that extra power, not trying to push out 300 frames per second in something. But overall, good to see the advancements that are happening within this. And that's pretty much it for today. Uh, I want to thank you for hanging out. If you have any questions or concerns, make sure you write in the comments over on YouTube. Shoot me a, something over on Twitter, and I'll be happy to discuss it or bring it up in the next show. So remember, if you're watching this on Twitch, click the follow button. If you're over on YouTube, click the subscribe button. And follow me on Twitter as the Gray Falcon. Until next time, have a good one.